to another product showcase. This one's a little bit different. This bike is not for sale. This bike is my bike. So this is a 2020 Kona Hanzo ST frame set. So it's a steel frame and it has been completely built up from the ground up. Hand-picked parts, custom paint, hand-built wheels built by Bonsai, by me. Custom engraving on the hubs, custom little doodads everywhere. This is part of our Built by Bonsai program, which the sky's the limit as far as what you want to do, customize. This has been my perfect hardtail project for the last, let's see, since late 2019 I've been doing this, trying to build a hardtail to fit my needs where I don't need a full suspension. This is what I've got. Now obviously these are road wheels or road tires on these. I've got my other wheel set I'll slap on and show you in a minute. Right now it's in commuter mode, so I'll ride this to work occasionally, once or twice a week. But this is the perfect hardtail. Yes, it's heavy. So am I. I'm 235 pounds. It's a steel frame, carbon wheels, onyx hubs, carbon cranks, carbon handlebar. It weighs in about 33 pounds with the mountain wheels, about 34 with these wheels, because the tire's a little heavy. The Maxxis hookworms, which I would not change those for the world. These are freaking awesome road tires. Yes, they're heavy but you don't have to worry about a damn thing. You can ride up a wall if you want to. They're that grippy and it comes all the way around the side. When I started this, I had taken a bike off the floor, a 20, I believe it was a 2020 Kona Big Hanzo, just a base level, aluminum frame, uh, RockShox 35 fork, or it was a Recon, it's the same thing. It had Shimano hubs, WTB rims, the tires I immediately changed to the Max's Recon, which I'll show you in a minute, because the, the WTB tires I know I wouldn't like. So I just swapped those out right away. So I had a control set of tires, essentially, that I know I would enjoy, and that were tubeless ready. And that allowed me to ride a bike that my customers could afford, which with the tire upgrade uh, made that bike, it's about 13 or 1400 at the time new. So it's about 1500 bucks out the door uh, for that bike. And that's a pretty solid starter hardtail if you're really gonna start riding. I had put Max Recon tires on it and Cush Core, NX, I think, drivetrain on it, SX cranks. Those I rode everywhere. I rode that bike at Samson Park. I did the bug jump. I rode it at Gateway Park. I did rode it at Quanta Hill. I rode it at North Shore, Horseshoe. It didn't matter where it was. I rode that bike everywhere. And it worked really well. And then we happened to have a Hanzo ST frame hanging up at the wall, on the wall. And like most of the people, I was like, a steel frame? Really? Why? It's, it's heavy. Why do you want a steel frame? I will tell you one thing about Kona. They know how to make a steel bike. And if you want to know anything about Kona, you get their Hanzo ST. The Hanzo ST encapsulates the soul of Kona. You, you, you feel what they mean when they build a bike. It is built to be ridden, it's built to have fun, it's built to do anything and everything you want to do. You want a bike just to ride and enjoy it? Get a Kona. They're freaking awesome. And the steel frames, yeah, they're heavier, but it's true. Steel is real. But it's, it's an excellent material still. Fast forward a couple years, we have this. I have built it up with a lot of race face parts. My tried and true Onyx and Knox wheel set, Industry 9 stem, Race Face Next R carbon cranks in purple. I've got a 34 tooth Race Face purple chain ring. This is my dirt mode. So these wheels are a little different. They're the same hubs, just green. This is the anti freeze green from Onyx. They. Man, love this color. This pop really good. Uh, I've got purple widgets, which are the axle stuff here. Purple nipples from Supreme. I've got Supreme CX race spokes as well. These are the race face arc 31 carbon rims. So they're a little lighter weight than the Noxes. I would normally have my Noxes be my off-road wheels, but I do swap my wheels between my two bikes. I've got a full suspension process, which will be another video. And then I grab this one. With this size tire on, the Knox rims, because they're a little wider, they don't like to fit in the process very well. 
So I'm running my mountain wheels on the race faces and the Noxes on my road wheels just so I don't have any issues having to swap tires and stuff. I just want to swap the wheels and be done. That's it. So I've got two full wheel sets to do that. Uh, these also have custom engraving with our logo on them. These I am running Cush Core as well. 27 and a half inch plus tires. I really like this size. Now, without the Cush Core, I don't like this size. Now, if I were to get a downhill type casing, a stronger casing, that may alleviate that issue, but I do like the Cush Core. I like what it does. I like the idea that it's going to protect my rims also. So what the Cush Core does is a foam insert, and it does come up the sidewall about here. Uh, so it stiffens the sidewall also. So this big 2.8 inch tire is not flimsy and folding so much anymore. It is much stiffer on the sidewalls, so it handles more like a smaller tire, like a 2.5 or 2.4. But I get all the benefits of the big wide tread, still fast rolling. Uh, I can run these at 18 PSI without issue pretty much anywhere. I may go up to 20 max, that's about it. Uh, and then with, with this wheel set, at this size tire and this cush core is what makes this bike off-road my perfect hardtail. This whole thing right here. Because what that allows me to do is run the, t the pressure very low. I'm not squirmy, I'm not rolling around, I don't have any of those issues at all. But if I hit a root, I hit a rock, something hard, I don't get a, a jar on my back or my butt. It's a nice, thump. it's it's smooth, surprisingly smooth, like I've got a little bit of uh, suspension travel in the back. Now on the fork, I am running it taller than what the frame calls for. This 2020 Hanzo ST is built for 120 millimeter travel with a 68 degree head angle. This fork is at 150, so I'm 30 millimeters over what the Hanzo calls for. And to be honest, this frame specifically is perfect at 140 millimeter travel for climbing, descending, and everything in between. I prefer 150 because I do like to go downhill more, but I don't have a problem climbing. So climbing on this with that fork is, I've got to lean over the front a little bit more because I am exceeding what it was designed for. But descending, <laughs> this thing's awesome. Um, so running this fork at uh, 150, my head tube angle is roughly 66 and a half. Because every, every 20 millimeters of travel is about a degree of change. I am running the MRP ramp control. This is the pro version, the Pipe Ultimate Fork, and it does seem to make a difference. I've installed it three or four times and just rode in the parking lot, and I hated it because I was like, what is this? It doesn't do anything. But I actually rode it off-road, and it does what it's supposed to do. Whatever that is, it works. Uh, so like around the trails here, I'll, I'll open it up. If I'm going to Summer Spider Mountain or even Riding Road, I'll turn it all the way in and make it like I'm adding a bunch of uh, tokens in there. So it does stiffen it up a little bit and I don't, don't need to add air pressure depending on what kind of riding I'm doing. Uh, simple, it does a job, it works well. Now with me running 27 and a half inch wheels on a 29 inch frame, it does drop the bottom bracket height about 10 millimeters. So if I'm on a new trail, I may hit my pedal if I don't know the pedal timing of the trail. On trails I know, I don't have any issue. And that may be why it's so much fun because I do lower my center of gravity slightly and allows me to really carve through turns and just have fun. It feels like a big dirt jumper when you're on the trail. But it's very efficient, fun to ride, easy to ride. Every time I ride my Kona Process, which is a badass bike, you'll see that soon. I wish I was on this sometimes. Or if I took my Process only and I left my Hanzo at home, I wish I would have brought the Hanzo because I could ride them both. And that's what I'll do. I'll bring both bikes, at least the frame of this one or the frame of that one with the complete wheel set and just swap the wheels, keep the frame in the car, uh, and then do one lap and then swap the frames and go ride the next lap and just have some fun. Because there's... There's something about a hardtail that makes riding so much more fun. You know, you, you feel more of the trail, you experience more of it. it. It is, you do have to handle the bike a little bit more 
to enjoy a hardtail. Every time I ride it, I fall in love with it over and over. Now, I did put a lot of money into this to build this bike to the spec to make it my perfect hardtail. And you can build your own perfect hardtail too, and it may not be this kind of spec, it may be something totally different, but Cushcore is a game changer, especially on a hardtail to help keep the jarring down. It makes a big difference. Now one thing I thought about too, for the comfort of, of this bike, because the front end is taller, it does make my seat post a little more slack. So by being a slightly slacker, I may be getting a little bit extra flex out of the system. So that takes a little bit of the edge off too, and that may be possible. These notch rims specifically, I built these up originally in 2017 for a Canon of Jekyll. Uh, 27 and a half carbon that I had. I had sold that bike with this wheel set which had non-boost hubs at the time and everything was going boost so I couldn't use them so I just sold the bike with it. These rims got sold to my employee which then he sold as one of my customers. He sold it back to me like three years later. And they're still going strong today. I am using the same spokes that I built the wheels up with in 2017. Yes, you're not supposed to use used spokes but I like to test things and find out. How durable are they? So I had taken these spokes off the old wheels, cut them to fit if I needed to, and then relaced them to the, the same rim with a boost version of the hub, the purple hubs. And I have had no issues except for one, and that's because I was 245 pounds and doing a little whoop to do in the parking lot. It'll do 180 to almost a 360 pretty easily, flipping the rear wind around, but I'm kind of rusty at it. And when I did that, the rear wheel hit kind of hard and bing, I broke a spoke. First spoke I've broken in many, many years. But that spoke was also built up on a wheel from 2017. I put a new spoke in and normal riding conditions, jumping, mountain biking, commuting, having fun, where there's no significant force this way, like I created, I've had no issues. Ultimately, if I build this wheel again, I'm going to use new spokes because that's the proper way to do it. But Supreme CX Ray spokes are extremely strong for how light they are. And here's proof. I've been riding a long time. I'm very flowy kind of rider. I'm very smooth. I ride light. I don't lock up and, and plow through things. I float over things. Now I take pride in knowing that I can ride this better than many people can ride their full suspension. If I had to pick between my two bikes, my Kona Process and my Kona Hanzo ST. If I had to keep, keep one bike for the rest of my life, this would be it.